now let's solve this problem 292 in this problem it is said that in the equilibrium position shown the resultant of three forces acting on the bell crank passes through the bearing o right so the resultant of these three forces passes through uh, this point o and it is said that determine the vertical force p so we are required to find the magnitude of this vertical force right and it is further said that does the result depend on this theta right so we have to find that does the result of this problem this p magnitude depends on this theta or not right so we have to find that now if the resultant of these three forces passes through this point o so then it will not be able to produce the moment about that point o so this means that the uh, total moment produced by these three forces about point o will be equal to zero right if the resultant is passing through this point o so then the result moment of these three forces must be equal to zero at this point o right so this means that the moment at point o due to these three forces will be equal to zero right according to the given condition so now we need to find the moment of these three forces about point o and then we will equate that moment equal to zero so that will give us the the magnitude of this p force right which is required so now let's say that the moment at point o and let's say that the counterclockwise moment is positive this is equal to and as we can see that this 80 newton force is producing counterclockwise moment about this point o so then we will write 80 and the perpendicular distance of this 80 newton force from that point o is this 200 plus 200 so this is 400 mm right so 400 divided by 1000 will be equal to 0.4 right so this will be in meters and then as we can see that this 120 kilonewton force is again producing counterclockwise moment about that point o so we will write plus and this will be 120 into this 200 and 200 divided by 1000 will be 0.2 meters right and now as we can see that this uh, p force is making some angle with this line right so then we have to find the the perpendicular component of this p force with this line with this arm of this uh, crank right so this bell crank so we have to find the component of this p force which need to be perpendicular with this 250 mm line right with this 250 mm length so now as we can see that this arm is making 20 degrees with this uh, horizontal line so this angle is 20 degrees right this is given so now as we can see that this line is perpendicular with this line and this p force is perpendicular with this line so this means that this angle is 20 degrees as well right so this angle is this is 20 degrees right so now we can resolve this p force into its component right so it has one component acting in this direction this one is the cos component right this is p cos of 20 degrees and it will have one component which will be acting in this direction right so this one is the sine component this is p sine of 20 degrees now as we can see that this sine component is passing through that point o so it will not produce the moment about point o so only this cos component is producing the moment about point o and as we can see that this cos component is producing clockwise moment about that point o so we will write minus and this is p cos of 20 degree and the perpendicular distance of this cos component from that point o is 250 mm right so 250 divided by 1000 is 0.25 meters so then uh, according to this condition this whole moment need to be equal to zero now when we solve this so that uh, p force comes out to be 23.38 newton right and now uh, as we can see that in this calculation in the solution of this problem there was no need of this theta right so this means that the moment of this 80 newton force and this 120 newton force are independent of this theta right so there is no need to have this theta right so this means that the result uh, the magnitude of this p is not dependent on this theta right so this is the solution of this particular problem